Hi, this is episode 40 of Grundos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. It's Freelancer Friday, which means that I'll be covering topics related to working or becoming a freelance developer. And today I'm gonna to discuss taking over a legacy application. It's one of the dirty little secrets in the freelance world that a high percentage of the projects that you'll be asked to work on are actually legacy-based applications, which mean that you'll be taking over or working with other developers. There have been a number of times where I've had great experiences taking over a legacy application. Notably, I was hired a few years ago to work on a legacy app for Eventbrite, and I was very pleased to find a very well-configured code base. It only took me about a week to become familiar with the inner workings of the application, and I was able to start adding new features right away. However, that's a very rare experience. Typically, freelancers are taking over a legacy application because the previous developer was fired from the project or because the app owner is having issues and is fed up with the things that are going wrong with the app. As a case study, a few years ago, I was asked to become the lead developer for a legacy Rails application that had been around for a while and had already had multiple developers, which is already a little bit of a red flag since well-written applications typically are much easier to maintain and therefore the original developers are usually still around in some form or another. To put it nicely, the app code was convoluted, and even after a year, it was still difficult to add new features because the legacy code was so fragile that one change could have a domino effect and break other features in the app, with a number of the bugs showing up weeks later. Needless to say, the situation was a mess. I was explaining this to one of my good friends who is a very experienced developer, and he recommended that I read the book Working Effectively with Legacy Code by Michael Feathers. After reading the book, I was able to take what I learned and completely revamp the application that I was having issues with. Here are some of my tips based off of my experiences for taking over a legacy application. The first is creating a test suite. Well, there are a number of techniques you need to apply to work with a legacy application, the first and foremost should be building a comprehensive test suite. No matter what language or framework that you work in, you'll be able to create automated tests that capture the functionality of the application. And the nice thing is because it's a legacy application, you already know what it's supposed to do. You're not doing it from scratch. So in the legacy application I was working on, I started creating tests for each model. I started with basic unit tests and then started branching out to integration tests that ensured that the various elements of the code bases were communicating properly with each other. Going through the process had the added bonus that I became much more familiar with the structure of the code and I was able to start refactoring the code as I implemented the tests. The next tip is to add new features via test-driven development. Once a test suite was built, I started building all the new features via the TDD method, which ensured that the test suite was up to date. By utilizing this process, it also made it possible to ensure all of the new features I'd add wouldn't break any pre-existing functionality. These are called regression tests. The next tip is to break out specific features into microservices. The further I got in the code base, I started to notice that the app had become bloated with features, and many of the components didn't need to be included in the core application at all. So I started creating microservices that handled isolated pieces of the functionality. Some examples were creating a microservice that managed user notifications and also building an app that processed the reporting engine completely by itself. After creating the microservices, I was able to get rid of significant portions of the legacy code. And then I was simply able to wire up the legacy app with the new microservices so they communicated properly via an API. The next tip is drying up the code base. In many legacy applications, you'll run into duplicate code, which causes a number of issues, including the issues of having to make one change in multiple places in the app. An example of this was how the application was working with view templates. 
there were a number of view files with identical HTML code. I was able to refactor these components into partials that could be shared across the entire application, which allowed me to make a single code change that would populate throughout the rest of the app. The topic of taking over a legacy application is important to understand. Not only for the reason of being prepared for what steps you need to take in order to work on a legacy app, but also so you'll have a better idea on how to build applications completely from scratch yourself. Remembering back to the event write app that I had mentioned earlier, that software was so easy to work with and add features to mainly because it had been built from day one using each one of the techniques that I already mentioned in this video. If you develop an application from scratch using these best of breed techniques, you'll make it easier on yourself when you're adding new features in the future and any developer that may work on that project. I hope this has been a helpful guide for taking over legacy applications and that you can apply it on your own freelance projects.